Good day and welcome. Today we are going to do a simple beginner's guide type of video. Uh, the whole point of this is to show someone who has never had a lot of experience with the campaign series about how it actually works. Uh, I'm going to go over quickly some of the combat, some of the movement, helicopter movement, some basic tactics, but also I'm going to go over the interface and how to add a mod. So if you're brand new to the game, I would highly recommend that you install the 2D Blue Water mod. How do we do that? We access it using the JSGME mod enabler. What I do is I usually right click on it and I'll send it to the desktop, which I have right here. So I'm just going to double click on it, click yes, and you'll see that the game comes with a number of mods. Uh, I am using the 1.22 update at the moment, and you should be using the same at all. Uh, here we have a, an official mod. You can see there's no community mod in front of it. That means it's an official mod. And these ones here are included, but they are the ones that community has been made. Um, you can tell who done it. Usually Umbra has made a couple of really good mods, but the main one to use for sure is this one here. Uh, add that. So all you have to do is select the mod you want, slide it over, and you're good to go. You want to do this before you start your engine, just as an FYI. If you're going to change the mods, again, close out of your game, come back to this shortcut, and then ch choose the mod that you want. So I have the 2D mod enabled. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the game. And we're going to go to a sa an old saved file that I have of a week in May Kong. This will give me a whole bunch of different examples of, of what we can use. So I'm just going to close out of that. This is a default install. I have multiple installs of my game. But this is the default, the same one that you should have. So I haven't changed or added the no video or no, no music to this particular part. So that's why that thing played. Anyways, back into the game. Wherever it went, there it is. So I'm going to resume game. We're going to resume the Mekong Delta. Load her up. There's a few things... We're going to talk about the interface first. If you are brand new to the game and you haven't done any adjustments or anything like that, you'll see that there are some adjustments that should be done before you do anything else. And I'm going to go over them here very shortly. All right, so I have the game loaded up. First things first, you notice that the toolbar here is colored. If you don't have that colored toolbar, I would highly recommend using it, especially if you're a new user, because we have things grouped together in relatively logical colors. How do you do that? You go to Options, Toolbar, Color. Right now you can see that it's on. Now that it's off, you can see everything just turns to a, a, a green. I prefer definitely having the colors on. The other thing you're going to want to do is change the size to uh, so that's the standard size, and large is this. I usually play with the large buttons because it's easier for me to see. One more thing is that I'm playing on a non-4K monitor. If you do have a 4K monitor and you're finding that this information over here is quite small, for me it's not bad because it's the standard size, but if you find this small, there's a way that you can fix that. And you do that by going to the EXEs. Uh, is it this one? No, I don't think it's that one. I think it's this one. Right click, right click on it, properties, and wait one second. Yeah, you want to change this. You want to click on this, and then you want to change this to uh, use the fixed scaling problem. So while this game doesn't have various uh, 
different screen resolutions. If you choose this option and this option, it'll help make that area much, much more legible. And now we're back in the game. Okay, the next thing you want to do is if you've not, so if you've updated and all that fun stuff, you're good to go. The other thing you're going to want to make sure is that the elevation delta here has been changed to 1. With a lot of systems, it defaults to 3. Not sure why, not sure how to fix it, but you want to make sure that your elevation delta is changed from 3 to 1. This is pretty important, and uh, that will very much impact the boot camp scenarios that you're going to play. Uh, this elevation, all it does, it just basically takes the elevated areas, which we don't have any here because it's all flat, but it takes them and, and boosts them up so you can kind of see the hex edges a little bit more. Anyways, you don't need to do that, so I would highly recommend, again, elevation delta down to 1. The other thing you're going to want to do is if you are... you are it's finding that the, the reports on the side are far too fast, what you can do is delay how fast they are. And right now the default is set to 2 seconds, but you can change them to 5, or if you turn on persistent, they'll stay there until you turn them off. Um, one thing about optional rules, these are the default optional rules. To get the best experience, you're going to want to play with exactly how they're set. Don't want to be changing it. Don't want to be turning it on, turning it off. If you want to learn more about the game mechanics and, and see some calculations and things like that, then yeah, sure, go ahead, turn off spotting and things. But I would leave it the way that it is so you get used to playing the game as it's intended to be played. Uh, should I go... Enhanced Fog of War, that means you're not going to be able to see much of anything. So when you see a result that says unknown effects or something like that, that means you can guess kind of what's going to happen based on the values of uh, the heart attack values and what you're shooting at. And you, once you get more experience, you'll understand more how this actually works. You'll see that, you know, if you're firing at a bunker with light arms for example you're not going to you're going to see that you're not going to be very successful at taking out anything or maybe causing disruptions or anything like that so it's best to you know use your heavy weapons use your aircraft use your gunships if you ha have them and use overwhelming force assaulting will be your friend absolutely uh, and hence the salt there's a whole massive gambit of things to be considered that are behind the scenes, like black box stuff that I'm not going to get into, but it makes assaulting far more realistic and far more effective. Um, it keeps the game play um, more historical, I think it does. And hence spotting, you'll see that the further something is, the harder it is to spot, and it takes into consideration terrain as well as if uh, you're using a recon unit, etc. Enhanced reporting, it kind of it gives you a little more details than you normally would, although the specific details about casualties you're not going to see if you have Fog of War on. Enhanced closed air support, that's the new closed air support model that we have for this. I highly recommend that you keep that on because it makes the experience so much better. Uh, adaptive AI, that's default, just leave that alone. That ha takes into consideration different values for different countries. Indirect fire by the map, you want that, you want to be able to target where you want, and this will allow you to do that. Otherwise you're going to be targeting unit or units that are within your line of sight, and that's it. Uh, vehicular facing effects, uh, even at this scale I prefer this option. I like making sure that my units are facing in the right direction, and they have their fronts where they have the most armor facing the enemy units with less likely to, to be destroyed. Command control, this helps with supply. This gives you additional supply 
um, from the company level, giving you your units on the ground a little more chance of being and maintaining supply. Variable visibility, this is if you've already played a scenario a whole bunch of times and you know what the visibility is going to change and you want to mix it up, then turn that on. Otherwise, don't. Historical landing zones, these are the landing zones that were available during the mission. Um, I would recommend turning them on because it keeps things a little more flowing as historical as they would have historical. Uh, what else? You can change the scrolling. I use screen edge and that will allow me to just move my mouse back and forth and access. If you go to the window edge it'll just... Oh, what is this? Sorry. This is the scroll bar. So if you use the scroll bar, so you can you can use your your keys to go back and forth, which I'm doing here. I'm just going up and down or side to side using the keys in that mode. Alternately, you can go to window edge, and that is just the edge of the window. So if I move that down, then yeah. But I typically play with the screen edge. Those are some of the basics for the settings that you should be considering and taking a look at. Uh, let's take a look at the unit list. So let's find some units. Uh, we're in the middle of some combat somewhere. Where is it? Here it is. Okay, so I have... I'm using the scroll on the mouse to go back and forth between the zoom levels. So here's an infantry platoon. This is your your core, one of your core units. Um, you can see, I'm going to start from the top. This is the strength of it. Right now, it has it's at mostly full strength. Uh, each strength point is worth half a squad. So most infantry platoons they'll have three squads. Therefore, two strength points is equal to one squad within that platoon. As they get reduced, it becomes less and less effective. Obviously. Although, the way that the combat calculations work, it'll sh fire whatever you're firing at, at times the multiple of the strength. So if I'm reduced to half, then it'll be at times three as opposed to times six, etc. Action points, you start with 100 action points every turn. This is a turn-based game. And every action will cost you, you can fire. In this case, it costs you 40, 34 points to fire. And you can see some more information about how much movement costs are by going into the unit handbook, which you can access here, or by pressing F2. Select your unit, press F2, or access it here. And here, this will tell you all the movement costs of the varying terrains that you're going to be encountering throughout the game. This value here will change depending on the scenario and the ground settings and you know, the weather, things like that. So keep in mind and that things will change. Take a look, get used to looking at your units. And you know what, since we're here, let's talk about the organization and how that works. So I've selected this platoon and this platoon is this. This is second platoon. It's an infantry platoon. It's second platoon from the B company of the 4th 47th Infantry Battalion. It's uh, using the 1967 organization, and right now it's classed as a B unit. A B unit means that it's been, uh, it's gone through training, it has very little combat experience, but it should be able to do its job. If this is an A unit, that means that it's A class, it's a veteran unit, it has much better stats than a B unit, its chance of killing something is better, its defense is better, its assault is better, it's just a better unit. And the opposite of that is if this is a C unit, you can think of it as a very, very green unit with minimal training. Uh, it's not going to be very effective. It's going to be slower at its tasks. Just not good. So let's do another quick example. I'm going to grab this infantry platoon. Notice that this has a headqu yeah, headquarters little sign. That means that's the first platoon and it's the company headquarters. So all the supplies coming from the battalion headquarters are gonna come through this platoon. So you wanna keep your guys close to that platoon. Going back to the unit handbooks, you'll see 
As I mentioned, this is 1st Platoon. It's B Company of the 4th 47th Infantry Battalion. Again, because that whole battalion is a B class, these are all B class infantry. All right, let's go back to this. So this is the uh, assault value. This is a nine. This is relatively high. Uh, as you pro progress through the, through the decades, you'll find that most of these values will increase by one or two, or it depends on the nation, of course. Uh, nine is good for this for 1967. That's a great value. Uh, Ten is the defensive value. That's how well it's going to soak up damage. Um, you want to stay in good terrain, and you want to stay as far away from fire as you can in order to make sure that you're not going to be taking casualties. Fire cost, I explained already, this is 34, and that's how many action points it requires to fire, which means that this unit here will be able to fire twice during a turn, and probably move, depending on the type of terrain that it's moving into. This is morale. This is a value from 0 to 10. Uh, six being okay. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, if you stack this with a leader, it will increase that value by one. I don't think there's a lot of uh, leaders in this particular scenario, so we're going to be pretty much stuck with six. This here is, you can change what you want to see down here, or on the thermometers, as you can see here, I changed this, I clicked on the morale, and all my units have high morale. Everything, all the blue is filled in. Here, the strength, I changed it to strength. So you can see all my units are pretty much at full strength. And then lastly, the action points. I will typically leave the action points on so I can quickly visually see what of my units can move or fire. Looking here, you can see that the thermometers are quite low. They're white for the most part in these cases for the infantry, which means they've done all that they can, although I do have lots of movement capabilities left and action points for my helicopters. All right. Those are some of the main things that I wanted to cover regarding the interface and just some basics in that, per in that methodology. Uh, we're going to do a quick... How do you move? Okay, easiest way to move. Let's go find a unit. See this headquarters here? I double clicked on it to select it. And now all I'm going to do is right click. That makes the unit move into the target hex. I can do it again. There you go. Sweet, simple, has some graphics has some movement. The vehicles are the same way. You select your vehicle. Let's select this vehicle. It moves. It moves back. Just like that. Now I'm going to show you how to load a, a unit. So I'm going to move these trucks into here. All I did was select the truck. I right clicked on that hex. And now I'm going to double click, or I'm going to, yeah, I can either double click, which selects everything, or I can go in the unit list and just select them individually. And I'm going to press the load button. So the lo everything down here is a button that you can access, but they all have shortcut keys. So for example, load is control L. So if I just pressed control L, those would load. But I usually like using the buttons because I'm old fashioned that way. So you'll see that they have now loaded into the truck. How do I tell what's loaded in there? What you do is you take your mouse and you right click on that particular hex and you'll see that are on the in the unit info box on the unit and you'll see that the headquarters unit is inside. So release the right click, right click again, and there we go. You can see that there's a battalion headquarters in there. What if I wanted to know what organization that unit is in? Well, that's pretty straightforward. We have a new feature under the Help menu, and you can access it by this, Alt F2 or Help Unit Handbook Passenger. And this will tell me what that, what that unit inside that vehicle is. And we can see that it's a battalion headquarters, and it's for the 4th 47th Infantry Battalion. That's fantastic, that's good news. Super simple, super easy, and it gives you all the stats for the unit. It tells you fire cost, 
blah 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 everything you ever needed to know now can I unload no so I don't have enough action points to unload that's fine uh, let's zoom out there's a helicopter here so helicopter operations are fairly straightforward you'll see this is a Huey and it has a G9 referencing in that same unit ID so what does that mean that means it is on the ground and it has nine turns in order to move around before it needs to refuel so I'm going to select the helicopter I'm going to select the ascend button twice and now you'll see that it's changed to low nine so I have nine turns and right now I'm gonna be flying in low so I'm gonna move you'll see that it moved and it costed me two points to move from that hex to this hex if I ascend again which is gonna cost me 20 points to move into the high level I can now move again and you'll see that it's only cost me one point so this is the main thing with helicopter movement um, helicopters in the high flight zone only cost one action point for movement in the low flight zone they cost two action points per movement and when they're flying nap of the earth that means they're in the weeds flying it costs them three action points per movement the at night helicopters are not affected by movement unless they're flying nap of the earth if they're flying nap of the earth I believe it works out to it costs you five action points per hex to move at night because you're flying really low to the ground you're worried about running into something at night makes perfect sense uh, what else once that gets to three you'll get a warning to say hey you need to find your helicopter and then land it or find a headquarters to land it in you can refuel a helicopter at any landing zone that has a headquarters or one of these type of supply trucks in it so if I had this supply truck over here and I came down to land so now I've landed and I've spent one turn to do that next turn it'll start the refueling pro or this turn it'll start the refueling process next turn it'll allow me to have 50 action points where I can either leave it on the ground or start it's up to you how you want to do with that and then the following turn it'll be back up to a full hundred action points as well as it'll be G9 uh, this is a variable you can change this if you want to have your helicopters lasting longer we decided on nine turns for this decade we're spending most of our time in the 60s uh, in this particular game so that is why we decided on that particular value uh, what else are we gonna do here Just look around see if there's nothing I can do so I'm going to end the turn and I will come back and we're gonna do some All right, we are back and we are ready for some action. You shall see that we have this particular BC unit surrounded. We have some full strength infantry platoons and some engineer platoons. We have uh, some machine guns close by. This is being hit by artillery. I don't know if we caused any casualties or anything like that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to try and assault it. But before I assault, I'm going to try and cause some casualties. So what I'm doing is I have double clicked on this machine gun and I'm going to highlight one of the, so right now you see that I have this unit or the machine gun highlighted and targeting that the hex itself. And there's two numbers that show up. One is three and one is 10. What does that mean? Three is the uh, hard attack value against that hex and 10 is the soft attack value so if I move this over this particular RPG unit you'll see that it just changes to 
whatever value at the unknown at 10. So we know it's an RPG, or I know it's an RPG unit just by the visual cues that it's showing me. And 10 is what I'm going to be firing at. If this is in a trench or a bunker or something like that, is 10 going to be useful? Yeah, probably not. But maybe I'll get a disruption, something like that to help. So all I'm doing is I, I make sure that I'm in fire mode. I'm going to move my mouse over top of my target and I'm going to right click on it. And I will do the same. If I survive. So I don't know what the effects are. If they're in an improved or Dakota, probably in trenches or something. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to try to target these units, see what happens. And let's bring these guys a little bit closer. Okay, so I have expended all my shots except for this guy here. We have one shot left. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform an assault. So how I'm going to do that, this is here is called a flanking assault because I have units on opposite sides of the unit that I'm going to be assaulting. So I'm going to select my engineers and right click in movement mode onto that hex and now that turns on the assault icons. And you'll see what happens here. It shows you that this unit is in the assault. I'm going to double click these and have them right click and they're going to be joining the assault. You can tell that they've now, they have an icon that shows you that they are involved in the assault. And I'm going to resolve the assault by pressing this button here. Fortunately, I was able to capture it. The morale had dropped to the defenders and I was able to secure the position. That was really lucky. We got really lucky there. Hmm, that's great. Uh, what else that I want to uh, cover? So we have some units down here. Let's find an artillery battery. There's an artillery battery. So what I've done is I've selected it and I'm going to plot some artillery on these boats down here. So I'm just going to scroll down. I see some... Oh, let's not actually do that because there's the civilian boats. Ah, let's do it anyways because this doesn't matter. So I'm going to select that hex right click on it, right click on it twice, and now I have two artillery units, or that artillery battery firing twice into this particular hex. Uh, let's see, I have another battery here, let's do the same thing for here, and that'll be that. You'll see that I have air power available. So how the new close air support model works is that you have a pool of aircraft, but you can only use the aircraft if you have air power available. So if this says zero, that means you don't have access to the pool of aircraft yet. You have to wait. Now I have two, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a nice juicy target. We know there's some targets down here. Um, and I have to predict where the VC are going to go. I'm going to predict that the VC are going to move from here to here and start moving up this path. So that being the case, I'm going to go to my close support, close air support button, select it, and you can see that I have a whole bunch of different aircraft to choose from. Well, I have one that's grayed out, that means I don't have access to that plane anymore. It's being used. Everything that's white, though, is that are, are planes that I can use. Um, do I want to find out more information about them? Just double click on them, and you'll see. This is a Oops. This is an F-100. It's a Super Saber. It has bombs and it has the capabilities of air, low flying, bomber, fast mover, and forward air control and bombs. Uh, if I choose another one, let's say the A-6. It says it's a Gumman A-6 intruder. A-6 intruder is the nickname. Uh, rockets, air, low flying, fast mover, ground attack, etc. Uh, here, that's an N, so it means that it's napalm. Gumman, a6 intruder armed with napalm 
It's air, low flying, bomber, fast mover, FAC, multi strike, and napalm. So you can choose whatever weapon system and aircraft that you want to call there. So let's let's use the A7 with rockets. And I'm gonna all I'm doing is selecting it, and then I'm gonna right click on my target hex, and you'll see that a bomb shows up. The only limitation to the amount of aircraft that you can call in is whatever the air power value is. So I've called in one right now, which means I only have one left. So let's do another one, A6 with bombs. I'm gonna put it. Mm, Let's just put it in the same spot. So now I have two aircraft coming in at that location next turn. <laughs> now there's one more thing to show you, and that is reconnaissance using helicopters. So basically any or any type of reconnaissance unit. But we have a, a loach here and we know that we got fired at back here. We want to go down and see if we can hunt down what that unit was that shot at us. How are we going to do that? We're going to fly towards them. See if we get shot at. Okay, we didn't get shot at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to the map of the earth. And it revealed itself at the headquarters there. We got shot at. But I want to see if there's anything else around. So I'm going to go to the combat menu and select this particular unit, which is the recon reveal. And it costs quite a few action points to do this. It costs 29 action points to do that. But you'll see that once I did that, because I'm flying so like on the treetops, it revealed another machine gun next door to it. So I'm going to do it one more time. Nothing else showed up. So I'm going to pop back up into low, which will save me some strength, and then uh, get out of there so we don't lose our helicopter. So what I did there, just as a, a refresher, I flew down along this tree line, just above this tree line, and then dropped down in this particular hex, used the recon reveal, which is this button here, in order to see if I could see any other units in this particular area. Now, things to keep in mind, it's not going to show you everything every time. You might miss something, you might have to do it multiple times in order to see the units that you're interested in seeing. But, the closer you are to the unit that you're trying to hunt down, the more likely you are going to spot it. Alright, there we go. I hope that uh, provided some insight and if this is useful, let me know if it's useful. Uh, just trying to help you out, especially if you're brand new to the game. There's a lot to, to think about and a lot to learn here, so it's understandable if there's questions. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I know this was a lot. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions and you're watching this on YouTube, please ask below. I'm definitely happy to answer them. Or you can go over to our forum at matrixgames.com. Again, Thank you for your time. I hope you're well. Take care, good luck, and talk to you soon.